Hello everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Rock to Your Studio and today I'm sharing with you a mixed media art journal page that I made using Brutus Monroe stamps and ink. The stamps were gifted to me from the company in exchange for making this video and then I purchased the inks uh, separately because I wanted to try out their permanent black ink in particular and then I also got some of their light colored inks just to see what they're like. Um, you can't really have stamps without ink, right? <laughs> so uh, for this video, the stamps that I'm going to use is called Abstract Art. And it, I was immediately drawn to it because it looks like mark making. And if you don't like to scribble, if you don't like to make splotches on your page, if you don't like to make drips because they're too messy, this is a great stamp set for you because all the images are those things that you can then just stamp, which is much cleaner than doing all those other messy things. So I decided to try it out on an art journal page in my small dilutions journal. I'm trying to finish this one up. There's only about five more um, open layouts that I can do. And I'm using some uh, collage papers that I have in my stash made by gel printing. This one with the girl's image on it is that um, reverse or resist image transfer. And I will put a link to the video where I did that um, using glossy uh, magazine pages from like a fashion magazine to make these type of resist prints. And then I also have some deli paper that has some, some paint on it and some uh, text weight paper that has some, some stenciling um, that's, you know, been, been pressed on the gel plate. So I was basically going for a color, a color way here. Um, I picked the girl's image and it had these um, warm sienna tones and coral and uh, buff titanium type colors. And so the other pick pages that I picked were um, similar colors. And then I threw in the green, the kind of a, a green gold type color. In addition, um, after I picked the, the paper that has the circular images on it, um, I picked that paper because the stamp set has a lot of circular mark making stamps in it. There, there's, you know, what looks kind of like coffee rings and there's some scribbly circles and <clears throat> some um, more like, I don't know, concentric circle stamp. And there was so many of that type of stamp that that I thought that this piece of paper with a lot of colors on it with circles from a stencil would go well with them and also would go well with the colors that I was using using that uh, that girl image and then it had the green in it so then I picked the green to go with it so it all kind of coordinates together so I'm gluing down my pieces of paper that I've chosen and torn to uh, fit my page the way I want it. I laid it all out and then I'm slowly gluing them down using Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. This is a thicker medium that I like to use for this type of work. And then I'm uh, squeegeeing out any excess medium and uh, making sure there are no bubbles or creases by using an old gift card to just scrape across and make sure that everything is laying down. <clears throat> the paper with the the buff titanium color on it with some black and green is deli paper and um, it is a little bit more tricky to get to lay down sometimes it wants to crease but then the other papers are more sturdy and they lay down a little bit easier but they're just basically paper from the the printer so that type of a, a weight as well as the reverse girl image is um, on just inkjet paper from my printer so then I decided to add in a little bit of text. I like the graphic nature of text. And these, this is from a dictionary page that I think is in Spanish. The girl kind of looks a little bit like she might be Spanish or um, maybe she might could, could be Moroccan or something. I don't know. But she looked a little bit ethnic. So I thought a Spanish dictionary would be more interesting plus less distracting to someone who only reads English because then 
you don't know what the words mean, so you're not worried about what the words mean as much. Of course, for my Spanish speaking and reading viewers, I might have put something on there that I should not have, um, not understanding the words, but the, the purpose of the text is graphic in nature and not to be saying anything at all. I don't have any idea what words are on there. I didn't even read them. It's just about the, the, the black patterning that looks interesting to me. <clears throat> So then I'm getting out some acrylic paint, unbleached titanium or buff titanium, and then a coral pink color. And um, I'm using those two colors in combination with my finger and a wet baby wipe to unify all the different little pieces that I've put on there. You know, I, I didn't cover every single inch of the page. So there are some white areas and some scratchy looking edges where I had torn that I would like to make smoother. Also I'm using the two colors on her face because the buff titanium is lighter than the color of the print and so it gives a little bit of a highlight on her forehead, nose, and chin. And then the pinky coral color is good for her cheeks and a little bit on her lips. And then I also highlighted her shoulder and uh, the tops of her fingers just to make the printed image more interesting. And this is probably, it might be only the second time I've used one of these type of a prints uh, that I made using the gel plate with magazine pages. It also is my best use of it. I'm not sure what else I used it for, but definitely this turned out really well. I was happy with the page. So I'm continuing to unify, just you know, putting paint on my finger and, and smearing it on there here and there until I'm happy with um, how the page is coming together as one composition instead of a bunch of glued on, slapped on pieces of paper. So it looks a lot better now than it did before I did the paint. So now it's time for the uh, stamping. I want to do the mark making stamping next. I was just touching up a few areas with a brush that I couldn't reach, like down in the crease of the the book where that where it all folds over. I couldn't get the paint down in there and with my fingers too fat. <laughs> so adding a little bit with the brush as well. Maybe highlighting a few areas, making her stand out from the background a little bit. But I end up adding some more color that really really does make her stand out in a bit. So now for the stamping. I've got this detail ink pad in Raven and it says it's permanent ink so that should be perfect for mixed media. Um, all my paint is dry so now I can stamp over the top of it. I have some acrylic blocks and I'm just attaching these stamps which stick on their own. They're made out of I think either acrylic or silicon. I'm not sure um, exactly how these are manufactured but they are self-adhesive to the acrylic block and I first pick out one that looks kind of like maybe you could make it with um, some small tube or something. Uh, it kind of looks like a coffee ring but of course these sizes are smaller than an actual coffee cup would be but you know it's it, you've got, it's got the look and then I have this other small round one that has concentric circles inside of it um, you might not be able to see it until the close-ups at the end maybe then this one is a scribble and I love scribbles I love how they look but I'm always very cautious about scribbling because it just I mean, you know, it's just a scribble, okay? I should be chilled about it, but I'm not. It feels like everyone else's scribble looks so much better than mine. And so having a stamp that's a, a scribble, and there are two different ones in there, um, is brilliant because then, you know, I don't have to do the scribbling myself. <laughs> it seems like a silly phobia, but I do really have a phobia about, about scribbling. I see other people do it, and it looks so great, and then I do it, and it's like, eh. I don't know. It's not as cool. Um, I also use a drip stamp. There's a drip stamp in there like paint running down, which is something I love to do, but it is messy. It gets in the crease of your book. You have to put paper towels down so that you can catch all the excess that runs off. And sometimes it won't stop 
like it it won't only drip a little bit it'll drip all the way down the page it doesn't look so much like a drip so having a drip stamp is also brilliant so after I've done the stamping with the black I went around the edges of the paper and just scraped the ink pad around the edges because I like to have a border um, or an edge on my pages lots of times and so just um, having the ink pad go around like that it works really well for that then I do some detail pen work on the girl I I got the white Posca pen and I added the white to her eyes so that her eyes stand out more because they the whites of her eyes were um, not white <laughs> they were kind of pinkish I didn't want her to look like she had pink eye and then I have a, a extra fine uh, fabric castell pet pen which is India ink that's a permanent ink great for using in mixed media and I'm just going around and adding some details around her eyes her eyebrows her nose um, with this very fine pin then I decide I need more green um, the green doesn't ha doesn't stand out enough as my third color in my color composition with the the off-white the coral and the green so I'm using a little bit of Dina Wakely heavy body paint I think the color is lime and when I put that around the outside of um, around the girl's head she really seems to come alive with that contrast in color it really makes her stand out from the page she was she was too blendy blendy and it it really made a difference when i put that bright bit of green on there i was very happy with that that was a smart thing to do so then i add some more um, detail pin work i'm adding some black around the perimeters and in the insides of her hair um, just with this same extra small very fine tipped pin I I like having the black as the neutral in this one because it really does make things seem more balanced than if I just had the three colors having that bit of black with the stamping is is very effective and this stamp set is perfect for this so Good job Brutus Monroe in designing this because it's, it's a, a good stamp set for mixed media if you want to use it in your art journals or on canvases things like that so then I decide I need more drips and I need them to be in the colors to bring those colors from the background to the foreground so I use a little uh, sponge pouncer and I put some of the coral color paint um, can't tell you the color right now but it's an, another Dina Wakely paint I will put links to all the products I used in the description box below both the Brutus Monroe ones as well as any of the paints and inks well, I guess I use only Brutus Monroe ink but uh, the paints the pens those type of things the journal I'll put all links to all that so then this paint is called Sedona I do remember that because I live near Sedona and it is the perfect color of the rocks of Sedona that kind of um, iron oxide in the sandstone is uh, definitely an interesting color so it also is is probably the color I use to print this um, the girl image I think it's probably the same color although I'm not sure I think it is so I put some drips of that color as well here and there and I, I think that looks really great um, they're not red enough to make them look like blood spots <laughs> that has happened to me before I've put some uh, too red of uh, blotches on and then all of a sudden you got the wrong idea so then I decided I needed a little bit fatter and more of the black um, it was it was too thin and fine and it's it was great in places where I needed very fine lines like around her eyes and things but I wanted a little bit more dramatic black so I got out my fine Posca pen which is an acrylic paint in a pin and I use that to add some detailing um, around the girl because it just needed to be heavier and darker I hope you're enjoying this video and if you are please remember to give it a thumbs up leave me a comment or question below subscribe if you haven't already and go out and uh, check the links below to the Brutus Monroe website and see if there's any stamps or inks or other products that you might be interested 
in having over there. Um, you know, that's, that's why they asked me to do this, so that I can tell you about their great products. To finish this up, I found a chipboard word sticker that said lucky, and then I found this other little sticker um, that I received in Happy Mail that says, um, she said, so it says lucky, she said. And I think this girl is lucky. Um, she's pretty, she's, you know, got bling, she's, I think that's something she would say. She would say, I'm lucky. I colored the chipboard with the black ink pad from British Monroe by just rubbing it over it and then drying it with a heat tool. And I did decide to put some glue on there to glue it down because I was afraid that the stickiness of the sticker wasn't going to be enough to keep it on the page as I turn the page and close the book. And then the final touch is a little bit of bling with some glitter glue from Nouveau. Um, Nouveau Drops, um, probably a dime, the color's probably diamond or something like that. And it just, I added it to the words and then I added it to her, her dangly earrings and her lips and her um, fingernails. And I gave her a little bit of green eyes and this page is complete. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <music>